Praise God. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of First Samuel, chapter 17. I read from verse 1. The Bible says, Now the Philistines gather together their armies to battle, and are gathered together at Shoko, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Shoko and Azekah in Ephes Dami. Damim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and they pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side and there were valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had an helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had griefs of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine, and you servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. Mark that, verse 8. Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. Amen? If he be able to fight with me, and kill me and to kill me then we will be your servants but if I prevail against him and kill him then shall you be our servants and serve us. Amen? The stakes are very high. The battle is set and they're supposed to be a man to fight Goliath and Goliath is setting the rules of engagement. Choose a man. We go on combat. If I win you become our servants. If you win we become your servants. Amen? The stakes are very high. Amen? This is one of the most famous story Bible. But there is a dimension I want to bring to the story that I saw the other day. Okay? And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Say a man. Say a man. Every Goliath in your family is looking for a man to fight with. Amen. I don't care which situation you are facing. Any situation. You know, one of the things I want to say is that God is the one who sends us to the families that we are born into. Amen. And the prophetic mandate is that there are situations in that family that needs a man or a woman to confront. Amen. That is why Goliath understands that he represents Philistine. He wants a man who represents Israel to challenge him. And whoever who prevails conquers the other nation. Amen? You never know if you are that man or woman that God is looking for. When you conquer that Goliath situation in your family, Amen? You will free your family from bondage. From servitude. Because Goliath is saying, if we win, you become our servants. Could it be that there is a condition in your family that if you face it and bring it down, you salvage everybody. Amen? You know, sometimes God lifts a man and he sets you to face a Goliath. Goliath can be anything. Let me say this. In Africa, we have giants. The biggest giant in Africa is poverty. Followed by sin. Let me say, there are main challenges you see in family bloodlines. One of it is maybe sexual perversion. The next one is poverty. The next one is alcoholism. The next one is ignorance. Wanasema ni dhambi, ujinga, umaskini, na usherati. Ama ulevi. Those are Goliaths. But you see, if you are in a family that any of those is existing, the Bible is saying you should be a man or a woman face that giant and the moment you prevail against that giant 
that the kingdom of that giant becomes your slave. Or, if it conquers you, that generation and your entire family becomes a slave to it. Let me say this. There are families you find people are slaves to alcoholism. That is a Goliath. Could it be that you are the man or woman God has appointed to bring down that giant? Amen? In 2007, July, I knelt my knees down and said, I'm getting born again. I didn't know what I was committing myself to. 16 years later, I have seen giants fall in the family like never before. Amen? The truth is, everybody seated here, there is a giant you are battling. That giant could be poverty. That giant could be sexual perversion. That giant could be ignorance. That giant could be alcoholism. I don't care what is the giant. The truth is you need to know how to face the giant in your life. And because each and every one of us, there is a Goliath that we must kill so that we can move into a purpose and destiny. Nobody was born without a purpose. But remember, every one of us must face our own Goliaths. My Goliath may not be necessarily your Goliath. Amen? You know what is challenging you. Amen? It could be poverty. And I want to show you something before we finish reading this. Amen? Now, Goliath has challenged David into a battle. Amen? And he said, give me a man. Amen? Even in your family, the devil will say, give me a man. I will fight with. If I conquer that family, they become my slaves. And Jesus is saying, give me a man. If that man cooperates with me, they conquer. The devil will serve the kingdom of God. Amen? Because there is always a, there is always a battle in the background between deities. And here one side is Jesus, the next side is the devil. So Lucifer has bloodlines in his grips. The only person who can salvage a family bloodline from the power of the enemy is one man. If you look at how God operates, God raises one man to bring out the children of Israel from bondage. He lifted Moses. He brought out the children of Israel from bondage. He lifted Joseph to bring the children of Israel from anger. Amen. He lifted Jesus Christ to lead men out of sin to salvation. So, the formula of God is looking for a man or woman to partner with him to bring people out of bondage. Amen? I don't know what I'm talking to. You could be in a family that is going through a difficult challenge. The question is, could you be the man or woman God is counting on to slay that giant in your family bloodline? Amen? So, what I want to show you is the formula on how we make giants bow. Amen? Because before this sermon ends, we are going to slay giants in our family bloodline. Amen? So, having said that, Amen? Verse 10, the Bible says, And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Amen? When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Question. This guy has not even fought them. He has just spoken words and already they are in fear. There is something you need to understand about the words that come out of your mouth. Proverbs 18.21, the Bible says, Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And those that love it shall eat the fruits thereof. Let me say this. Most of us Christians, we are defeated because of what we confess. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because what you confess is what you possess. Words. This guy knew the power of words. And he intimidated them. The problem is, most of us confess negativity. Ah, hear me, Mr. Afford. The moment you say that, it's recorded in the heavens you can't afford. Can I tell you the difference between the rich and the poor? 
is in their speech. Simple. Poor people say, I can't afford. The rich people say, how can we afford? You see, a statement shuts you down. A question opens up possibility. Don't say you can't afford. Say, how can we afford? Then you start thinking on how to afford. When you say, I can't afford, that is final. It's a statement. I can't afford. Period. And the word became flesh. There are a few things I want you to see in this story. The Philistine knew you beat people by your words. You intimidate them by confessing victory. The Bible is saying they were greatly afraid and dismayed. At what? The words that came out of the mouth of Goliath. So could it be that you've been with a situation for so long until the only thing you can confess is that situation. Sisi, sisi ni maskini. Sisi, iyo atuta afford. Iyo ni amatajiri, my friend. Hakuna mtu walizaliwa tajiri. Everybody becomes what they think and what they confess. That is why the Bible says, let the poor say, I am. Do you know what you are doing? When you confess, it is written in the heavens that you are rich. You talk like rich, you speak like rich and find, guess what? You will become one. The moment you confess poverty, you become like it. Mimi wacha niseme, nilikuwa naendanga hata washroom. Intercontinental. Unabeba simu zako mbili, una hata ten bob. Unaziakele uko, wanasema welcome sir. Unatembea with your head held high. Because even umaskini nastuka, umutu wanakuja kususu wapi. Five star hotel. Sayu unataka kitu, kitoka tena, wanakuambia thank you sir. My friend, it is faith. Munacheka. Kuna watu wakiona hiltu na natoroka. Suwali, wenye wanaenda uko wakona mapembe. Because let me tell you what the devil does. The devil messes up your mind by your speech. Watch out what you are saying. Because words become flesh. If you keep confessing negativity, sooner than later that's what you become. There is power in your speech. What are you reading? What are you confessing? There is a favorite book called Think and Grow Rich. Not work and grow rich. Think and grow rich. Amen? That is not my sermon. My sermon is saying this. There are principles here I want you to see how to face your giant. How to face your Goliath. One of the principles is what you confess and what you believe is what you become. So, Goliath aliwauzia uoga Sema kuwauzia uoga. And they bought that. Because the Bible says they were afraid. The question is this. As the situation you've been in for so long until you've bought into it. Sisi. Sisi tuko hivi. Let me tell you something. If you cannot be annoyed about a situation, you cannot change it. You know, sometimes I, I tend to give people some stories. Some of us come from some crazy background. Poverty was the second name to our family. Until I showed up and I started changing the story. Now, I'm talking of the kind of poverty I'm talking about. Nile, my grandmother could take. Watch out. Amen. Because the moment you are a quitter, you they have confessed it and it's written. You go carry that title. Amen. Amen. What I'm trying to say is this you are the one to change the story in your family bloodline by what you decide to believe and what you decide to confess. The challenge has been few Christians confess what the word of God says. Amen. You know, poverty is a spirit. How many know that? One, two, five, six. So only six people know that poverty is a spirit. 
Poverty is a spirit. Hi. How many people know that wealth is a spirit? One, two, three, four. Same hands. My friend, let me tell you. There is a way poor people talk. There is a way poor people dress. There is a way poor people eat. And there is a way poor people conduct themselves. Because behind that character is a spirit. Amen? My brothers and sisters, poverty is a spirit. And wealth is a spirit. It's got nothing to do with money. It is the spirit that you're carrying. Now, it could be that that spirit is running through the bloodline. Amen? But you have to have enough faith to challenge that spirit. Amen? They say being born poor is not your choice. But remaining poor is your choice. Amen? You could find sexual perversion is a spirit. Amen? Watu wangapi wanasikia mama anasema ni melala na watu kama 1,000. Waisikia mtu anasema hivyo? Atu wenye ni melala nao, wakiweko wala hini hivi itafika tika kutoka Nairobi town. You've never heard of that. There is a lady who was confessing that. Wakiweko mmoja mmoja kutoka hapa Nairobi watafika tika. Question, is that possible? If there is a spirit behind that, that's possible. These things are spirits. And there is something I need you to understand about spirit. Spirits are persons without bodies. A spirit is a person without a body. So for poverty to express itself, it must be attached to your life. It is a spirit. A spirit is a living entity that doesn't have a body. And spirits, listen, spirits have ears, eyes, mouth and everything. Umesikia wanasema hiyo umaskini na shout baka inasikika. Kwa nini na shout iko na mdomo? Umaskini iko na smell. Praise God church. There is a smell of poverty and there is a smell of wealth. Umaskini iko na walking style. Na udosi iko na walking style. Because these are spirits. Umaskini nafanya watu wanakuwa intimidated hata na kamtoto. Amen. Wealth in a, the Bible says eh? <laughs> Let me say this. Spirits need to attach themselves to people to express themselves. Unaweza kuwa unapigana na mtu ulevi lakini behind the alcoholism is a spirit. Amen. Now one of the characteristics of spirits is that they have a will, purpose and they have a mission. So is the same thing with the spirit of God. He is also a person. He has a will, but he needs to attach himself to people. Because if we cannot understand that life is spiritual, you cannot face the giants that you are facing with power. Amen. I want to show you something here that David knew that if we could apply the same principle, I don't care what Goliath you are facing, it will bow. Amen. Because the most important thing in coming to church is so that you can change and transform your life. Amen. It's not good to come to church Sunday to Sunday and things are the same way. Utafika mahali usema hata hii wako vision kama inafanya kazi. Amen. Yes. So, let me finish reading this and then I go to the main subject of my discussion. Here yote ni background I'm trying to lay. That life is spiritual. Amen. But you see the first strategy that, that Goliath is using is to sell them fear and make them afraid. Amen. That is what giants do. Giants are designed to intimidate you. Amen. Poverty is there to intimidate you. Sexual perversion is there to intimidate you. But I'll show you before we finish here. Every spirit and Goliath that we are facing is going to bow. Amen. It is good to know how to make these spirits bow. Now, they were afraid. Verse 12. Now, David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons. And the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. 
And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and the next unto him Abinadab, and the third Shammah. And David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. Mark that. 40 days. When you see anything in the Bible about 40, 40 is a theological term meaning long. Amen. Jesus fasted for 40 days. They went through the wilderness for 40 years. Amen. Anytime you see 40, it means it was long. 40 means this problem was long problem. It's not something that happened in one day. Amen. Goliath, all the Philistines coming there morning and evening for 40 years, it could be that in your family bloodline, there is a situation that has prevailed for so long. Mpaka watu wamezoea, imekuwa norm. Amen. Ahuyo, huyo ni mlevi. Awo, that is why, ukiambia mtu, my name is Nehemiah. The first thing wanakuliza, Nehemiah wanani. Do you know why they want to know the father's name? So that they can see what is the identity of that family. If I tell you I'm Nehemiah, why should you be bothered with my father? Sinimekwambi jinaangu, that should be enough. No. They want to find out unatoka wapi. Mtu akikuja hapa aseme I'm Tiffany. My father is president uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. Bas. Nyinyi wote mnajua huyo ni wa president. Kuna vile mnaanza kuongea na yeye. Kuna vile mnajipanga. Mwingine akuja hapa aseme mimi ni wa John Matendechero kutoka Kibira. Kuna vile mnaanza ku relate na yeye. Why? The background gives someone identity. And we relate with people based on their identity. Amen. Now here, the Bible is saying they came evening and night for 40 days. 40 means long. Yani, umeyone lektu inetu adonda sugu. Goliath was not something that just came in one day. Amen. Uneza pata kuna scenario ime oppress bloodlines like 400 years. Ndiyo yu situation una handle you know, sometimes, let me say this. When we show up, we think we are new. This is the problem of us parents not dealing with situations. Because if I don't deal with family demons, do you know what will happen? They jump to the next generation. Now, next generation, they have their own demons plus the demons you have failed to deal with or have failed to deal with. We are in this together. So, ukipata baba yako... Watu wangapi wa meisema baba zetu walikuwa wapi? Wanaume wakiunda pesa. Unasikia mtu anasema huu ni guka. Hii mall ni ya guka. Hii petrol station ni ya guka. Baka unajuliza kuwani sisi tuli inherit nini madeni. Yani unajuliza where was your father when men were looking for money? Because if you don't challenge a Goliath in your generation, it will move to the next generation. Sasa next generation, they have it worse. Waka una mapepo zao, Na wewe na walord zako. Amen. That is why children who come from rich families, it is easy for them to succeed. Why? Already wazazi washa ngoa hizo mapepo. Kwanjia. They know it is easy to build. Lakini ukitoka mahali watu wajai jenga. My friend, lazima ufast kama wazimu. Ndiyo hizo mapepo uziangushe. Sababu if you don't deal with those things that are in your family right now, umeambukiza the next generation. Watoto wana grow, wanaanza kupambana na ile kitu yenye ukupambana nayo. Amen. That is why the Bible is saying they came day and night for 40 nights. Okay? Now, Jesus said unto David his son, take now for your brethren an ephah of this parched corn and these 10 loaves and run to the camp to your brethren. And carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of the thousand. And look how your brothers fare. And take their pledge. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left the ship with a keeper. 
and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistine had put the battle in an array, army against army. And David left his courage in the hand of the keeper of the courage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brothers. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion. Underline that word, champion. So, all of us, we have champions in our bloodlines that we must face. I, I, I don't know. But everybody has an issue that is really an issue that you want to address in your bloodline. Amen? The Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard him. And spake according to the same words, and David heard him. Are you seeing now the power of confessing? You know, Goliath is consistent. He knows that you win by speaking. That is why one of the ways we also win in the kingdom of God is prayer. Prayer is words. Amen? Even Martians come from the word ma is water and chanting. Chanting. Amen? Goliath anaanza kuuzia David uoga yenye alikuwa anauzia Saul. He's doing the same thing. But now he's found his match. Sema is match. Sema is match. Uh, because David was prepared. Remember David was anointed by Samuel? Amen. He's been taking care of the sheep. Now strategy the enemy uses to conquer your life. Kuna vitu zenye unajiongelesha. Mimi sitawaitoka hapa. Sisi tuko hivi. I can never be nothing. Mama yangu aliniambia you are good for nothing. If those words keep ringing in your life, they become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Amen. Now, Goliath came with the same strategy. It is the war of words first. Now David akamskia. And all the men of Israel when they saw the man fled from him and were so afraid. Number one, jamani mkubwa ni jitu. Anawauzia uoga, majamaa wanashika uoga na wanatoroka. Amen. Now watch this. And the men of Israel said, "Have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth him, watch this, the man, there is always a present or a reward for slaying Goliath. Amen? If you bring down any situation that is prevailing in your bloodline, for sure there is a reward. Because between you and your destiny is that giant. That giant could be sexual perversion. That giant could be poverty. That giant could be alcoholism. That giant could be anything. But the moment you bring down that giant, you step into your destiny. Now, he ndio zawadi ya mtu mwenye anangusha giant. Amen. The king will enrich him with great riches. So you see, between you and wealth is a Goliath. Amen. And I said Goliath is a spirit. Poverty is the spirit that comes between you and wealth. It comes to oppress you so that you don't step into your destiny. So he was told the king will enrich him with riches. Number two, he will give him his daughter. Number three, make his father's house free in Israel. Meaning they don't pay taxes. Scare your package. Unapewa mali. Na king anakuongeza msichana yake. Alafu amulipi tax. The package was so enticing. Amen. And David spoke to the man, the man that stood by him saying, David alikuwa anataka kukonfirm. What shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine and take it away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Now, I want you to see David is playing the same game that Goliath is playing. Now, David is also sizing this guy. He's bringing that giant into perspective. He's saying, Goliath is uncircumcised. Remember, circumcision is the sign of covenant between God and his people. What David is saying is that this guy does not have any covenant with the Almighty God. That is why David is saying, who is this 
this uncircumcised Philistine. Unaona watu wengine walikuwa naogopa wanaenda. But David is challenging Goliath. Amen. So the first thing David does is say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Amen. Remember any situation you are facing is spiritual. It's only manifesting in the natural. Now David knew one thing that you win in the spiritual realm before you win in the physical. The problem with us we want to win in the physical before we win in the spiritual. And life is spiritual. They say before something happens in the natural it has already occurred in the spiritual. So when you pray you go into the spiritual realm and fix it and then you fix it in the natural. That is why David is questioning who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is defying the armies of the living God? Amen. So David is trying to bring Goliath into perspective. Amen. So next, this is like I told you, questions open up your mind. Statements shut you down. David asked a question, who is this guy? Number one is not covenanted to God and is defying the armies of the living God. That's a question. What condition is this that want to defy the name of Jesus, the name above every name? I say poverty has a name and Jesus is above poverty. Amen. Philippians 2:9 God exalted Jesus and gave him a name that is above every name. I mean Every situation you can face there is a name that is above that situation that at the mention of the name of Jesus that situation will bow I think I'm preaching to myself what I'm trying to say is this it doesn't matter what you're going through it has a name that is why everything has an identity hata kama ni ugonjwa inakuanga na jina hepatitis arthritis diabetes hiv aids they have names Amen. But the Bible says there is a name that at the mention of that name every knee should bow. Amen. If you catch this glimpse there is no situation that will terrify you. Name that situation and speak to that situation in the name of Jesus. It will not bow because of you. Amen. It will bow because of the name that we have been given the bible says there is no name among men which we have been given upon which we will be saved except the name of jesus christ amen so it means situations have names and names are identities of things that is why hepatitis is a living spirit ikona maskio umaskini kona maskio Usherati kona masikio. At the mention of the name of Jesus, these things will bow. And when a situation bows, you become victorious. I've gone ahead of myself and given you the clue. But let me build up and fill up the gaps. Amen? I've just gone ahead of myself. That's where I wanted to finish. But let me say this. This guy, he asked a question. So we said, questions open up your mind. Statements shut you down. Now, and the people answered him after this man are saying, so shall it be done unto the man that killeth him. And Eliab his eldest brother heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And they said, why did you come down here? Remember, this guy was in the house when Samuel was anointing David. The brothers were in the house. And they know this guy is anointed. Now you are not anointed for decoration you are anointed for war when god anoints you it is preparation to face a giant amen so david was already anointed the brother got mad and who who are you left those few sheep in the wilderness sasa anajaribu kumudhalilisha it's called the big brother syndrome umeachia nani mkondoo umekuja kufanya nini hapa yeah 
Umeingia mahali wanasema na huyu amekuja kufanya nini hapa? My sister, my brother, you are a son of the king and a son of God. You are created in the image and likeness of God. Do not let no one look down upon you because they did not create you, neither can they give you purpose and destiny. Your destiny and purpose comes from the hand of God. You know sometimes we let people talk us down and question who we are. Amen. You see people didn't create you. God created you. And it is only God who can give you purpose and destiny. Because men are limited. You know me I can look at you and judge you from the outside, but I don't know what God has put inside you. It is only you and God who knows. That is why people can talk you out of your destiny. Wewe ni nani sasa? unajidharau you see you see the brother is old actually unaona kitu wanamwambia in my mother tongue they say bantu bamomba chaya meaning people who come from the same place wanadharauliana why watu wanakuanga na shida mungu akikulift si strangers ni watu wa kwenu juu mumeishi nao mumemangania mumengangana kiporo na hao so when they see you being lifted they have issues who are you to be a boss who are you to be a ceo because these people saw you when you were growing up walikuona ukienda mtoni umeparara sasa unakuja umepigilia so who are you your brothers and sisters are the biggest liabilities remember who sold joseph his brothers and sisters and why were they selling him because he shared his dream with them amen same thing is playing out here David his brother wanamwambia umeachia nini sheep and already there is a giant they need to deal with but you see unasikia bible inasema hapo juu they were afraid amen but this guy is trying to tell David at nyinyi <laughs> wewe enda uchunge kondo <laughs> that's where you belong <laughs> amen and this is his brother <laughs> amen Unajua wale watu wenye wamekujua ndio wabaya. Kwa sababu when God starts to lift you to heights, they don't take it. Sikuizi anaringa, si kuringa, ni kuinuliwa. If God lifts you, you don't expect me to talk the way I was talking when we were growing up. You don't expect me to dress the way I was dressing when we were growing up. You don't expect me to associate with you Let me say this my brothers and sisters there are dimensions when God takes you there you go alone Let me repeat this kuna mahali Mungu akikuingisha unaingia peke yako Ukifanya blanda ukuje na rafiki wewe umeisha Umeisikia mtu anasema akinilimuonyesha boyfriend yangu akanipropose alafu nikapata mimi nisnuka si wewe ndio ulimpeleka huko Unaenda kumuringia hey nimepewa unaona hii gold ring yani ameni Dema anaangalia anasema ah iwezekani vile unakaa hivi hata hujui kuoga eh nitapigilia luku na nikusnuke anapigilia luku anakuja anaambia ah dem kwao ni wachawi jamaa anaepa unaachwa mataani whose problem was that you are the one who introduced that person mali ulikuwa umeekwa na Mungu ungenyamaza uende fanya harusi uko na mume wako but unakuja kubrag na mtu unabragia ajaolewa utawacho ushangae Unapeleka mali na Mungu <laughs> unataka kubeba society mzima Let me tell you there are areas that only God can take you because already when you unajua ni wapi unaenda na Mungu Amen Unaanza kusema there is a multi million contract that is coming up Ah hiyo ikiingia nimeshiba mtu wana kas Mtu wana kas hata hiyo contract uioni problem ni nani ni mdomo yako Umeenda kutangaza vitu yenye Mungu anakupikia. Hata bishop anasemanga weka siri yako na Mungu. Waacha vitu hivi itokote upakuo ukule ushibe. Ukuje ukiongea kama unapanguza mdomo. Sasa wewe unaanza kusema before it happens. Because the people who know you are the people who will be envious of you. Nobody, you know I don't know you. So I don't have nothing against you. But those people closest to you and let me tell you Watu watakangi mkiwa mahali moja level uende waache. Why? Misery loves company. Sasa wewe umeinuliwa umewaacha hapo wamehang. Kwa nini unaenda? Na tulikuwa pamoja. 
So that is why sometimes when God wants to take you somewhere, he prepares you alone. Accept na ingia hiyo place alone. Be established alone. Ukikuwa established, now come back and pull them up. Sometimes unaweza kuwa unasaidia mtu ana drown, muna drown na yeye. Sasa hujamsaidia. Why can't you come out, swim to the shore, jipange, tafuta boat, mkujie. Unamkujie ukiwa sawa. Otherwise ukingangana kushikilia yeye, ni sister yangu na anakupeleka kwa shetani. You are dying. Amen. So I have digressed. My point is this. David's brother is talking him out of facing something that is really messing up Israel. Amen. Actually the brother is talking him out of his destiny. Sababu David this is destiny moment. God has prepared him in the background. Now he is ready to be ushered into the limelight. Na sasa ile unakuwa ushered kwa limelight, be careful of the people around you. Because the people around you can short circuit you. Hao watu wako karibu na wewe. Hey, nimeitwa interview kesho. Hiyo job ni 300 tao. My friend. Mtu anasema ah hiyo utapata. Na shetani anakuja na simamia hiyo word. She said life and death is in the power of the tongue. Mbona usiende interview peke yako? Ukimaliza ukipata job ukuje useme umepata. Amen. So that was not my sermon. Let me finish. I'm I'm finishing. What is the time? Yeah, we have about 5 minutes or 10. Amen. So that happened and David said, what have I done? Is there not a cause? You see David is asking questions, not statements. Watu wengine ukiulizwa hivyo, haya basi nimekuachia huyo Goliath nimeenda. Unarusha mikono, unaacha baraka yako. Unajua kuna watu ukimchallenge kidogo hivi, ah, umeona hivyo haya, nimewacha. No, usika hivyo. Wakisi ago tike ile ndio kuachia unaona kwani hiyo kazi ndio itanisaidia nimeona kazi ngapi nimeenda kwetu that is how you walk away from your destiny because the enemy will fight you where your destiny is amen so usirushe mikono watu wananifuata fuata kwani hii kazi ndio nini nimewaachia unatoka mahali Mungu alikuwa amekuposition amen David alimuuliza ndugu yake, "Kwani hakuna sababu ya kupigana? Kwani nimefanya nini? Is there not a cause?" Now he started challenging the guy. David is always asking questions. If there is a Philistine here, don't you think there is a cause? Why are you telling me to go and take care of sheep? Lakini sisi ukikuwa challenge kidogo tu hivi, umeiba pesa. Nimeiba pesa, nimeoacha kama nimeiba nimo. Ah ah, simama jitetee. <laughs> Unasema nimeiba pesa gani? Can you provide evidence that I've stolen? If you don't have evidence, wewe uko na porojo. You produce evidence and then I will step down. Ba kama una evidence, hakuna mahali tunaenda. Unaweka mguu yako chini unakaa. Umeiba pesa unaanza kulia. Kama nivu basi hizo kazi nimewaachia. Unawaachia kazi gani na hiyo ndio blessing yako iko hapo. You see the devil is very smart. Anajua huyu kuja umwambie hivi na hivi na hivi. Unajua walikuwa wanasema wewe ni msherati, wewe ni mwizi nakula pesa ya church ah kama nilivyo nimewaachia hiyo church ah ah don't be too quick to throw in the towel wanasema mimi ni msharati walinipata wapi na nani let them produce evidence stay put kitu kidogo hivi umerusha mikono juu umeenda nyumbani na hapo ndio blessing yako iko you walk away from your destiny because you've been challenged hata inaweza kuwa ni uongo amen my brothers and sisters mi pasta niliona hata niangalie vizuri nimeacha hiyo kanisa. Sasa unaweza pata pasta hata alikuwa anatoa kitu kwa macho. Uliona vile niangalie vibaya. Small small challenges make you leave church. Kanisa ni ya Kristo. Mi hata bishop akiniambia neem nimesema usionekane hapa. Kesho nakuja asubuhi na mapema. Rika ya ndara baba boza akikuja na msalimia good morning bishop. Atashindwa kukufukuza. Sasa nyinyi mtu akiongea kitu kidogo umetoroka. Kitu kidogo umerusha mikono juu. Because shetani anajua ukiendelea kukaa hapo you will move to your destiny and you will feel your purpose and destiny. He will do everything to make sure akutoe hapo. Amen. Mtu anakuwa kwa job watu wanakuja wanasema huyu jamaa ameiba. Hawana evidence. Challenge them. You said I stole, yes. 
Where is the evidence? Prove it. If they can't prove it, stay put. Amen. Sometimes wacha nikwambie, kama uko in the right place, shetani atafanya kila kitu atavuruga amani utoke. Ukitoka sasa ndiye akupate. Amen. David ndio huyu anavurugwa na ndugu yake. Na unaona hapo mbele package iko. There is the king's daughter, there is riches na kuna tax exemption ya familia yake. Kuna mazuri lakini unaona mtu anamkoroga hapa ndugu yake. Amen. Those people closest to you they are the ones who will hurt you the most. Now sometimes if you don't if you are not vision oriented kama una purpose na destiny yako uko focused you will be drilled. Wewe oh, unakaje hivi umekuja kufanya nini hapa? Ah kama ni hivyo nimewaachia hiyo kanisa umeenda. Na sasa hiyo malaika ametumwa. Ule msichana amekuja sabati kumi. mpeleke. Enje wanakuja na package yako wanapata huko. Anapata kiti. Inarudi. If there is something you need to learn about the devil and we need to learn is that the devil is very persistent. Shetani is very persistent because anajua binadamu wana give up haraka. Very few people really persist. They say persistence breaks resistance. You need to persist. Ka kitu kidogo hivi nimewacha. Ka kitu kidogo hivi nimeenda. Unaenda wapi? Hakuna kanisa perfect. Na kama kanisa ni perfect ukijoin sababu wewe si perfect it has stop kuwa perfect. It is true there is no perfect church. Just like there are no perfect human beings. So here this guy is challenging him na ni ndugu yake. Lakini jamaa akamuuliza si kuna sababu Unaona jamaa anamwambia enda kwa ship. Amen. And this is what happens. People challenge us out of our destiny. Question, how many times have people talked to you out of your destiny? How many times? Because people can easily talk you out of your destiny. This story is very long and I'm not doing it justice. I keep on digressing. Finally. Nimesema finally sijui mara ngapi. Amen. Now, and they turned from him toward another. Actually what David did, he turned away from his brother. Sometimes there are people you need to turn away from and be focused. And they spoke up in the same manner and the people answered again after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, and they rehearsed them before Saul and they sent for him. The words that David spoke were rehearsed before Saul and Saul said, "Bring that guy Saul did not say bring David because David was a giant. It is based on his words. Why? The words of David were carrying life. Amen. What zenye aliongea ndio zilifanya mfalme akasema muite. And when he was called and David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Mtu asitetemeke juu ya jamaa. Amen. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Wow. Wow. So David amemwambia yani aliwaambia hivi. Mtu asingishwe baridi na huyu jamaa. Mimi nitaenda ku deal na yeye. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this field side to fight against him. You see, Saul is also talking David out of the battle. For thou art but a youth and he a man of war from his youth anamwambi we ni kijana na huyu jamaa ni veteran wa vita sometimes you are facing a goliath that has been in the family for years people will ask who are you what do you have who do you think you are tumekuwa maskini miaka hii yote sasa we ni nani amen you see that is the enemy speaking and you will tell them i am a child of the living god and the bible says we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. You see this guy is being sized up by 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 Saul. Anamwambia utawezana na huyu jamaa. Huyu jamaa amepigana tangu akwe mtoto. Who are you? And now next. Now let me tell you how we win in this kingdom. If God has ever come in through for you. Please don't forget any day that God came through for you. Because the same God who gave you victory yesterday will give you victory today. Because if you do not archive what God has done for you, 
it's very easy to be discouraged. Amen? Because David had a track record with God. Unajua, kama kuna siku mungu wame come through for you, ama masiku, enda uziandike zote chini. Because the next time you are facing a challenge, you will go back and say, kama mungu wali nitoa hapa, surely, hii pia ntaweza. Why? If you have had past victories, they give you strength to face any challenge that you face. Amen? Now, look at David. David had a track record with God. And this is what helped him. And David said unto Saul, remember before you go to the battlefield, is the battle of? Before you fight, it is the battle of? It is the battle of words. Wani na wapoteza? Ama I'm too fast or something. Ama mmelala. Simama tumalize history. Stand up. We finish now kama mmesimama. You can't sleep on me. I'm finishing this now. Amen. David said unto David This is Saul. David, David said unto Saul. Your servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion. Sema lion. And a bear. Sema bear. And took the lamb out of the flock. And I went after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against, against me, I caught him by the beard and smote him and slew him. Wow. David is saying, there is a day I fought with a lion and a bear. And I killed them. Yani anajaribu kumuambia mse, usinione hivi. When the spirit of God comes upon me, I have done wonders. This guy is breakfast. Now, David is giving his track record of what he has done to Saul. Amen? And, and, and when he finished doing that, the servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Can you see the mindset of David? The mindset of David is, if I killed a lion and I killed a bear, I am able to kill this guy. This guy is no match for the living God. Amen? So, David is setting the stage to destroy Goliath. Through his mindset, even us, we need to set the stage to destroy whatever challenge that we are going through through our mindset. Amen? Say, David said, moreover, the Lord has delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with you. And Saul armed David with his hammer and they put an helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail and David guarded his sword upon his hammer and they are said to go for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with this for I have not proved them. And David put them off him and he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag which he had in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him for he was but a youth and rude and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that you've come to me with the sticks? And the Philistine cast David by his God. Sema, cast David by his God. Question, why is Goliath cursing David if it is a battle? Why is he cursing? Because these conditions are spiritual before they are physical. Are you getting the point? What are we? Must curse you because they understand if they conquer you in the spiritual, they will conquer you in the natural. Amen? Now, this was not a battle between David and Goliath. This was a battle between God and Satan. Because if the guy was big, why couldn't he go and fight David direct? Why must he curse David with his gods? Amen? Because Goliath knew that he got his power from the demons. Amen? 
Now I want to finish so that we understand anything that we face is spiritual first before it's natural. Amen. That is why the Bible says he cast David enda musome hiyo verse 43 and the Philistine said to David this is the war of church this is the war of this is the war of words before anybody pulls out the sword words are going forth sijui kama mnaona hiyo it is the war of sijui hii nitafanya aje paka ingie it is the war of words <laughs> because Goliath is speaking before he fights. Amen. Swali, before you go to that interview, do you pray? What have you spoken before you face your giant? Before you go to work, do you pray? Before you go to that business, what do you speak? Because it becomes spiritual, then it is natural. Amen. Unaamka unakimbia kwa biashara unakaa, utaona dust lakini ukiamuka rika ya ntarano babazika ripe jeshua amashia alafu uende already you've programmed the environment for victory amen kama mtaona this this perspective then then we we wasted our time amen because he cast him by his gods amen i want you to see what david does And the Philistine said to David, "Come to me, and I will give your flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field." Amen. Amemaliza part yake ya the war of words. Amemaliza. Next now, it is David's turn for his war of words. Sema war of words. Then David said to the Philistine, "Raka yantarano baba hika babazi." This is very powerful. Now, the Philistine has finished his part. Sema he has finished his part. Watch how we have finished their part. Amen. Now it is our turn. You see, there is witchcraft and there is godcraft. You didn't get me. There is witchcraft and there is godcraft. Godcraft ni nini? Prayers. Unajua mchawi anasema It is the battle of words because this battle of prayers maombi ni uchawi wa Kristo mchawi yote when they want to chawa you they have to pray they have to chant na wewe ndio ushinde you have to pray you have to chant the principle is here This is how we win against giants. Rapa ka yantarano baba inka ripa mazaka. Unaenda hiyo interview unaomba in tongues. By the time unasalimia wewe jamaa unasema shama. Hata anashindwa mtu amesema nini? Ushamroko umemaliza. Mapepo yote ilikuwa hapo ina bow. My brothers and sisters in this kingdom we rise through prayer. We rise through what we confess. We don't confess defeat. We confess victory. Amen. It doesn't matter the giant. The Bible says in Philippians 2:9 that God exalted Jesus and he gave him a name that is above every name. Every situation is below the name of Jesus. Because that name is above every demon. The Bible says that the mention of the name of Jesus everything will bow of things in heaven of things on earth and things under the earth hata iwe ni mapepo kutoka kuzimu at the mention of the name of Jesus they bow Situations don't bow because they want to you force them to bow if you have the revelation of the power in the name of Jesus Amen David knew that I want to show you before we are winding up. Amen. It is called the war. The war. The war. This is the best church someone have ever attended. You are getting it now. It is the war of words. Proverbs 18:21 say life and death is in the power of the tongue. When you say a blessing, indeed a blessing goes forth. 
when you say a curse a curse goes forth the bible says whatever we bind on earth is bound in the heavens whatever we lose on earth is loosed in the heavens it is a spiritual principle both david and goliath knew this principle amen watu wengine hawako wanajua now i want us to see what david is doing amen the bible says the name of the lord is a strong power the righteous run unto it and are saved do you know what it means to have a name a name is the identity and the reputation of something the reputation of god is what we stand upon you know the english language is very limited you know when you say name name really means reputation name means integrity god has integrity the name of god is the integrity of god you can stand on the name of god on his reputation that is why we pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be hallowed be amen why is it about his name the first thing it is his integrity the name of god is is the integrity of god The name of God is the integrity of God. The Bible says there is no name among which men might be saved except the name of Jesus. And Jesus the Bible says God gave him a name that is above every name. The name of Jesus is above poverty. The name of Jesus is above sexual perversion. The name of Jesus is above alcoholism. The name of Jesus is above ignorance. That at the mention of the name of Jesus poverty will bow. <laughs> Amen. I want you to see what David is doing in this scripture. This is what David did and this is what we need to do. And then say David to the field side, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Amen. David is telling him, I am coming against you in the integrity of the name of God. The God whom you have defied. I am standing on the integrity of God and I am facing this Goliath. I don't care what you're facing. If you face it in the name of Jesus, it will bow. If you face it in the name of Jesus, it will bow. You know the Bible says of things in heaven. Heaven there are angels. Of things on earth, in the second heaven there are demons and principalities and powers. In hell there are demons principalities and powers but the bible says uh, at the mention of the name of Jesus everything will bow poverty sicknesses this guy knew something the bible says Goliath cast David using the name of his gods and David told him I come against you in the name of the Lord. Question, when you are facing challenges, whose name do you come under? If you come in your name, they will flow you. But if you come in the name of the Lord, you will win. Amen. What does the Bible say? In the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied, it is called the war of the war of the war of let me finish the last words of david this is now the war of words this day the lord will deliver you into my hand and i will smite you and take your head from you and i will give the carcasses of the hosts of the fields in this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a god in israel amen david was doing all this to the glory of god amen when you want to challenge poverty not so that people can celebrate you no 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 we want to challenge poverty so that god can get the glory amen my brothers and sisters there is no nobility in poverty there is no nobility in poverty poverty is the worst type of tea you can ever give someone 
there is nothing that hurts a man like when children ask you for bread and you have none it is bringing disgrace and dishonor to the name of the lord may the power of the living god in the name of jesus break every bloodline inherited curse of poverty in the name of jesus amen this is a deliverance service but through the word amen and all this assembly shall know that the lord saved not with sword and spear for the battle is the lord's and they will give you into our hands and it came to pass when the philistine arose and came the rest is history david threw the stone it hit him here akanguka nyuma let me tell you physics inaniambia ukigonga mtu hapa anafaa kuanguka wapi si mtu ukigonga hapa anafaa anguke nyuma swali kwa nini mawili mgonga akakanguka mbele Mungu alikuwa ameweka slap. Anasema David wacha ikuje imuguze. Ilipomuguza. Amen. That was God's battle. It was not David's battle. Sometimes what you need to do is the war of the war of nani anafanya kazi nyingine? Ni Mungu. Amen. Sometimes tunapigana vita yenye si yetu. Amen. But you must speak fast. so that you release god david released god akaachilia mawe akaambia mungu fanya vile unacheza kama wewe cheza vile unacheza anga golath alistukia kwa chini jamaa alikimbia kwa na sword akachomoa sword ya golath akakata kichwa amen that is how we are going to face our goliaths it is the war of the war of father we thank you every spirit that has challenged our life this day this morning be it the spirit of perversion be it the spirit of poverty be it the spirit of ignorance be it the spirit of alcoholism may all this spirit bow in jesus. the mighty name of jesus. jesus thank you jesus thank you lord father we thank you because the bible says we are more than conquerors through him who loved us Father we thank you for this day and because any and every situation that we are facing let it bow down in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Father we thank you and because at the mention of the name of Jesus we shall be the bible says that they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. May you save us this morning from every Goliath that we are facing. to the glory and the honor of your name yes. in Jesus name we pray amen god bless you makofi makofi hey